Question number four, Jamie Lee Ross. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Transport and asks, does he remain committed to his proposals for new and increased fuel taxes in light of recent reports of petrol prices reaching record highs? If so, what consideration, if any, will he give to the increased cost of living his fuel tax proposals will have on New Zealand families? Mr Speaker. The Hon. Phil Twyford. I am committed. Order. Right order. Here. Can I ask, Ms. Ms Bennett, can, can you just wait at least until the Minister started answering before you start your interjections? Mr Speaker, I am committed to striking a balance between affordability and taking urgent action on the transport infrastructure deficit that we inherited. MB estimates that the changes to fuel taxes will see an average family in Auckland pay an extra $5 per week. By contrast, our government's families package will put $75 a week into the pockets of 384,000 low to middle income families. In terms of considering the impact of taxes on fuel prices, I intend to follow the same process as the Honourable Simon Bridges did in 2015. If petrol prices continue to increase, will he revisit his proposals to increase fuel taxes, which will raise petrol prices even higher? International oil price fluctuations have a far greater influence on petrol prices than the policy of the previous government and this government of regular small excise increases. And as successive governments have shown, it makes no sense to make major infrastructure investment decisions based on highly volatile oil price fluctuations. Order, order. I'm just, go I'm just going to ask Mr Hudson and Mr Smith just to turn their volume down a little bit. Maria Lube. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what reports has he seen of past governments ferrying the amount of fuel tax levied to match variations in the global oil prices? None. <laughs> Is he concerned that the rising cost of petrol will increase even further if he's successful in increasing fuel taxes by up to 25 cents a litre? Well, as I've tried to make abundantly clear to the member, the increase in fuel uh, excise is a very, very small increase compared to oil price fluctuations. And I would point out to the member that instead of paying $400 million to the wealthiest 10 per cent, this government's putting order, 75... Order, order. Is he saying that his proposals to increase fuel taxes in Auckland by up to 25 cents a litre, as he's announced, is small? Well, what I would point out is that 25 cents is the maximum rate that was consulted on in the draft GPS. It's not necessarily the rate that we are going to settle on. It applies only in Auckland where the regional fuel tax is in place, not to the rest of the country. The reason that we are investing in our transport system is because we've inherited a legacy of an infrastructure deficit after nine years of totally unbalanced transport policies. We're committed to doing the right thing for this country and the right thing for the, for the economy. Maria Lubeck, sorry, point of point order. order. Um, so, so the question earlier was ruled out because we were referring to 2017, yet the Minister seems to be able to have, uh, make comment about the last nine years as he <coughs> wishes to, and I'm just asking for some clarification. I, I have a feeling the Member's trying to relitigate a ruling I made quite some time ago. I think I will ignore it. Maria Lubeck. To the Minister. What lessons will the Minister take from past increases of fuel excise while international petrol prices were high? Mr Speaker, in 2015 the fuel excise was increased after petrol prices increased by 40 cents per litre. Prices later stabilised and returned to $1.70 per litre by the end of that year, 2015. I've learned from that experience that you cannot make infrastructure investment decisions based on international oil price fluctuations. They're simply too volatile. And I learned also from the former Transport Minister that those fluctuations dwarf the changes in the fuel excise. Order. David Bennett will stand withdraw and apologise.
point of order, Mr. Speaker? No, well, the, the, member, the member knows absolutely he interjected an unparliamentary remark in my direction during the asking of the supplementary question. And what for? Why do I withdraw and apologise? Sorry? Why do I withdraw and apologise, Mr Speaker? Why? Yes. Because the member made an unparliamentary remark um, and, and it was exacerbated by the fact that it was done during the, um, uh, during the asking of a supplementary question. Point of order. What, what was the unparliamentary remark? I'm, I'm not going to repeat what the member said about me. So, uh, just... Withdraw and apologise. Mr Speaker, I, I, I need order, your explanation. Order. The member will withdraw and apologise now or I will take more serious action than has happened in the House uh, for quite some time. Could you get, could you get me the... To withdraw and apologise? No, I'm not having a point of order. I'm waiting for Mr Bennett to decide whether he will comply with my instruction to withdraw and apologise for reflecting on the chair while a supplementary question was being asked. Is the member going to withdraw and apologise? Point of order. No, I'm not having a point of order, Mr Bennett. The, you're either going to withdraw and apologise or I will name you. That's just oh. Order. <coughs> withdraw and apologise. Thank you. The Honourable Paula Banner. Um, sorry, sir, but it is in reflection to me yesterday having to withdraw and apologise. I genuinely do not know what it was for. I did not make a comment as I left, and this is leading to this kind of disorder when we don't know what the actual line is as to what you find offensive and what you don't. When I've looked at Hansard, I know what I said as I left. I made no disparaging remarks about you last night, and this leads to my colleagues in a position now where order, they don't know order. what... The member will resume her Seat. The member will resume her seat. If she wants an explanation for how she breached standing orders yesterday, I suggest she watches uh, the, the TV, either on the Parliament TV or on at least one of the news channels, to see herself interjecting on her feet as she left. Point of order. Uh, is it a new point of order, Mr Brownie, or is yes. it a relitigation? No, it's a new point of order. A new point of order, the Honourable Jerry Browning. Uh, Mr Speaker, people might like to look at the um, uh, TVNZ clip that's currently running of a member challenging the Speaker on frequent occasions and ultimately being required to leave the House and being quite messy all the way through. Uh, on none of those occasions was the member named. My question simply is, why do we go suddenly from a position where uh, the Speaker um, uh, does not want to uh, apparently leave, make people leave the House <clears throat> does not explain what an offence might be, but then simply requires people to uh, accept the arbitrary decision of the chair or be named, which everyone knows is quite an extreme step for anyone in this House. It seems the step that they, they, we've gone from a very, very uh, simple, uh, straightforward position of how you deal with these things to one that is uh, quite draconian. And I think that is the problem we've got with the inconsistency of the way the chair is operating at the present time. Yeah, well, um, I note the member's comments, but as the member knows well, uh, naming is, um, I think, standing order 90 uh, is the punishment for being grossly disorderly and, and refusing to withdraw and apologise for quite an extended period of time is grossly disorderly. Uh, if, if it's the same matter, uh, Ms Bennett, you're running a serious risk of losing a, a number of supplementary questions from your team from 
the first Tuesday back. So to be clear, um, Mr Speaker, what I wish to be is uh, actually not unruly in this House. So I need clarification that it was yesterday when I said it's a waste of time that you took such offence to that I had to come back and with, well, with, when I came back you insisted that yeah, I withdraw that, that, that's, that's, exact, that's exactly right. Uh, and uh, if the member had not said that she was leaving the House, I would have required her to withdraw and apologise then. But seeing she was self-banishing her, herself, I thought that that was the best way of dealing with it uh, and we could get on with business. Um, I, I did reflect uh, to the member later on that on a previous occasion when I had done uh, exactly the same thing, uh, made, a comment as I made a comment as I was uh, self-banishing, uh, the Speaker sent for me and made me come back and apologise and then booted me out again. Uh, the member was treated pretty leniently. So the, so order, the point order. of order? No, no, the member will resume his seat. Her seat, sorry. Mr Bennett the, will withdraw and apologise again. Talking to his colleague. Point of order. Speaking. No, the member will withdraw and I just, apologise. I just want to table a withdrawal um, because I might as well be using it all the time the way the House is going at the moment. Um, and so the member's declining to withdraw and apologise? No, I'm just seeking your guidance no, as to why I No, you're not seeking my guidance. You're going to withdraw and apologise. Uh, Mr Speaker, what for? <laughs> I just I need to know what I did wrong. Mr Bennett, you reflected on the chair on my ruling again. I mean, I, I just not. I mean, the member, the member understands what he does. He's not an unintelligent member. It's not something that happens accidentally, but the member should be able to remember sort of 30 seconds after he made a comment that he did. The member will withdraw and apologise. I withdraw and apologise, sir. A point of order, Jerry Browning. Mr Speaker, is the uh, chair immune from the provisions of Standing Order 120? Sorry, can the member say that a little bit more loudly? Yes. Is the chair immune from the provisions of Standing Order 120? No. Point of order. Then isn't uh, simply requiring members to withdraw and apologise without some explanation of the reason for that impugning uh, improper motives against oh, a member? For goodness sake. Oh, look. Oh, Mr. 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 Brownlee, this is this has got this has got to the point of, of being ridiculous. The member is a the, Paula Bennett will leave the chamber. The member will leave the chamber. I've lost where we're at. The, the supplementary question, David Bennett. Okay. No, primary question. Our primary question. The Honourable David Bennett. To the Minister of Corrections, does he stand by all his statements, actions?